pyloric stenosis is the topic. And before I get into this, it's I think it's good to draw a diagram of what exactly is the pylorus and then what exactly does it mean if indeed the pylorus is stenotic. So I'm drawing a basic diagram of the stomach and the components that are in close proximity. So here you have the esophagus where food comes down. And then this big part is the gastric area or the stomach. Um, and then coming out, of course, is the duodenum here. The pylorus is a muscle in this area. It kind of presents like that. And the pylorus, by definition, is essentially the part that connects the duodenum to the stomach, very simply put. Now, in pyloric stenosis, what you have is a situation where, as the word stenosis implies, it's extremely stenotic. So it would essentially be something like this. It would be a very narrow, even narrower gap um, occurring. And that stenosis, as you can imagine, uh, prevents food from traveling from the stomach into the duodenum. And so essentially, it, this is causing an obstruction, gastric outlet obstruction. And that's the uh, fundamental aspect of pyloric stenosis. And the thickness of the pylorus uh, will be typically greater than 4 millimeters, whereas normal is less than 2 millimeters. So that's basically what's happening. Uh, just a few quick tidbits about this. It's greater in males, 5 to 1 ratio uh, from males to females. Usually can uh, happen in firstborn males, interestingly. Most clinical vignettes will talk about a firstborn male. Uh, happens anywhere between th the presentation, I guess, uh, of uh, the patient or the baby, rather anywhere between three to six weeks of life where the parents will bring the baby and some of the risk factors include maternal smoking and um, also there's one medication that's associated uh, with uh, um, increased risk meaning if the for some reason if the baby is given erythromycin that in significantly increases the risk of developing pyloric stenosis so let's get into some of the symptoms. Well, without a doubt, uh, the most common uh, clinical vignette um, term is projectile vomiting. And um, for those of you who don't know, projectile essentially means it shoots out uh, and will hit the wall, basically. Um, there's a movie called The Exorcist, and there's a scene in the movie where the girl um, projectile vomits and that's basically what that means like literally comes out with some severe force shortly after eating um, another a physical exam finding uh, is also very very uh, key uh, on clinical vignettes and that is an olive shaped mass that you can palpate in the epigastrium um, and that's um, connected uh, with uh, pyloric stenosis as well. So a typical scenario is that you have a three-week-old baby, parents are obviously deeply concerned, and then you come uh, and do a physical exam and you're able to find this, and that helps you and guides you with regard to what diagnostic testing you're going to order. Um, typically the most important test or the most uh, a uh, helpful test to diagnose the pyloric stenosis is an ultrasound. And without a doubt, it's a relatively inexpensive, uh, very, very um, safe, and least invasive. So it's cheap, it's safe, and it's not invasive, I guess. That's one another good thing about the ultrasound. One very important part of the electrolytes that I really need to mention because this is also mentioned in clinical vignettes. When a person has persistent vomiting, they vomit out uh, key electrolytes, and those include potassium, chloride, and protons. So when you vomit these out, 
the resultant electrolyte levels in your body would be hypokalemia, which is of course low, low potassium, hypochloremia, which is low chloride, and if you're vomiting out protons, you are left in a state of alkalosis, and in particular metabolic alkalosis. So when the lab values are presented in a clinical vignette, you will see this scenario right here. So what's the treatment? The treatment is uh, surgical um, in nature, and there's this very specific term given to the actual type of uh, surgery that's done, pyloromyotomy. So let's take a look at some vignettes, see what this looks like in a patient presentation. A one-month-old boy is brought to the emergency department by his mother, who states that he has been having what she describes as projectile vomiting for the past several days. She states that he vomits every time she feeds him, and the situation seems to be getting worse, although he does not seem to be in pain. She describes the vomitus as non bilis and he has a normal stools with no blood. On exam, the infant appears to be mildly dehydrated. Abdomen is soft, and there is a palpable, olive-sized, firm, movable mass in the right upper quadrant, which is the following most likely diagnosis. Well, you couldn't possibly get a clinical vignette that's more classic for uh, pyloric stenosis than this one. Um, one quick point: notice it's non-bilis, which is true in pyloric stenosis. There's no bile in the in the vomitus, whereas some of these other ones, like duodenal atresia, is bilis vomiting. So that's an important differentiation between those two. Intussusception would actually have bloody stools, and this child does not have any bloody stools. Hirschsprung's disease essentially is where a baby's fail, failure to pass um, stools or failure to pass meconium, which is the first stool that a baby ever has. A midgut volvulus would also include bilis vomiting. So just in case you're wondering how do I eliminate some of the other answer choices. But without a doubt, this is pyloric stenosis. Uh, one more. A four-week-old boy is brought to your office by his mother because he has had increasing amounts of vomiting over the past week. Uh, initially it started as spitting up after a few meals, but now the baby is having projectile vomiting after every meal. She says that the vomitus is non-bloody, non-bilis, and the baby appears hungry after he vomits. This is her first child and she's not sure if this is normal. Physical exam is unremarkable. Lab studies show sodium is normal. Potassium is low, chloride is low, and bicarb is a bit high. At this time, the most appropriate next step is to, well, again, uh, very classic, and a very good question because it includes the electrolytes. And remember, you vomit out protons, uh, chloride, and um, potassium. So because he's vomiting out these things, the electrolyte levels in the bloodstream show um, the appropriate uh, um, result, which is hypokalemia, which is right there, hypochloremia, which is right there, and then he's in a state of alkalosis. Alkalosis, and that's, that's evident by the slightly high bicarb. So, without a doubt, the safest, cheapest, and least invasive test that's used to diagnose pyloric stenosis is an abdominal ultrasound. So that would be choice C.